Jaw harp versus Jew's harp versus mouth harp. What's in a name and what should we call it? Now, this instrument has many names, and in English, we know it as jaw harp, Jew's harp, Jew's harp, mouth harp, and the older Middle English term gugaw, which means a showy trifle, bauble, or trinket. But it's not just in English. It has many different names from around the world, like in Germany, where they know it as maltrommel. In France, they know it as gambarde. In Sicily and Italy, they know it as maranzano. In the country of Norway, they know this instrument as the Norwegian monapa. In the country of Ukraine, they know this instrument as drimba. In the country of Hungary, they know this instrument by the name drombe. In the country of Estonia, they know it by the name parmupol. In the country of the Czech Republic, they know it by the name Brumla. But it's also found throughout Eurasia and Asia. The oldest archaeological find of the mouth harp, jaw harp, or Jews harp was from the Altai region in Russia in 1800 BC, where five mouth harps were discovered at two different sites and they were constructed from splintered ribs of cows and horses. There have also been finds of old harps in Mongolia, Tuva region in Russia, and Siberia with harps being made from antlers. Apart from finds of just old harps, Asia is rich with styles and variations of jaw harps still being played today, with many harps being made from metal, brass, bamboo, palm, and other natural materials. In fact, we don't even know how far back into history the jaw harp goes. The Susap is a bamboo-constructed jaw harp that is made and played by the indigenous people of Papua New Guinea. The people of Papua New Guinea are estimated to have arrived there 50 to 60,000 years ago, and it is unknown how long that they've made these instruments, as they do not preserve well in rainforest environments. It is also not known whether the concepts were brought with them from Asia, or if they were discovered the technology of these instruments on their own through simultaneous invention or multiple discovery. Anyways, back to the names, and there are a lot of names before we go back to jaw harp, juice harp, mouth harp. In the country of Russia, it's known as Vargon. In Yakutia, it is known by the name Homus. In Rajasthan, India, it goes by the name Morchung. In southern India, they know it by the term Morsing. In the country of Pakistan, they refer to it as the Chang or Chong. In Nepal, it goes by the name Mochanga. In Indonesia, it goes by the name Karinding. In the Philippines, it goes by the name Kubing. In 
In Bali, it is known as the Jingong or Gingong. In Assam, it is known as the Gogona. In the country of China, it is known as Kaoxian. And, oh my, things with strings. In Japan, it is played by the indigenous Ainu people and is known as Makuri. As well as in Vietnam, it is known by the name Dan Moy. And it's possibly known in many more places by many more names. So if I forgot any, be sure to comment below and let me know what you know. Now to get back to the English language, it's various English names and the question of which name, if any, is correct. In English, courtesy of the interweb, the names are as follows. Juice harp. Juice harp, jaw harp, mouth harp, Ozark harp, gugaw, and probably more than that. If you know them, comment below. And most of the debate around this is centered around the term Jews harp. Now, according to the website, jewsharpguild.com, under the history of the Jews harp, it reads, for over 400 years, the instrument has been connected in English to the term Jews. Frederick Crane in the VIM, otherwise known as the Jews harp journal, said, to summarize, six words have been discussed as the original form from which the Jews of the Jews harp was corrupted to. Comment below if I mispronounce any of these. They are Jaws, You, Yugd, Giga, Giga, and Ga. However, this instrument has no connection to Judaism or the Jewish people and was possibly a mistranslation, corruption, or evolution of a much older term. And this came possibly from the word Giga. The jaw harp name came to popularity in the 1900s and it really had nothing to do about political correctness. But it is a misnomer of the term Jews harp. And the Jew term Jews harp is also a misnomer. So what you have is a misnomer based on a misnomer. The definition of the term misnomer is a wrong or inaccurate term or designation. So jaw harp was a corruption or evolution of the word Jews harp. And Jews harp was a corruption or evolution of an older term, possibly Guga, and it has nothing to do with Judaism. So does this mean, are they both incorrect, being misnomers? Or can a commonly used word for something even be incorrect when it's used by large numbers of people? Do languages evolve and are people really free to talk how they want and feel? So can we call it by the old name of Guga, or must we find the oldest word, a word that's possibly from another language? Is the mouth harp from one place or culture or from many? And do only the earliest forms and names count? Or can it be like other ancient musical instruments, like the flute and drum, where variations in sound and construction method across different countries and cultures create unique awesomeness wherever they tend to be found? What is your take on this? Comment your thoughts and opinions below. Now, what do I call it and why? The first time I experienced this instrument, it was called a jaw harp. I personally like the term. It and the term mouth harp are very descriptive of what it actually is. These are instruments that are played either against the teeth, part of the mouth or jaw, or against the lips, which are also a part of the mouth. Both are great terms. I like the ring that the name jaw harp has to it. Now I'm from Kansas, which might make me sort of a prairie billy. So I kind of like that this has a hillbilly or country ring to it, jaw harp. Speech is kind of unique to the individual and you wouldn't tell a dog how to bark. And I talk how I like and how I feel. I feel like calling it a jaw harp. In the past, I have published some videos under the term Jews Harp, including the massive playlist Advanced Jews Harp. Click above, I'll try to put a card up there. And these are a bunch of videos on techniques on how to play the jaw harp. In 2017, I and other members of the NAJH, which is the North American Jaw Harpists, decided to resurrect the North American Jews Harp Festival. It was a long running festival starting in 1991 and ending in 2013. We had the festival in Cottage Grove, Oregon in August 2017 under the name the North American Jews Harp Festival 2019. 
after the fest concluded, we talked to some of the local residents and we were surprised to find out that many of them wanted to check it out, but were unsure as they were not of Jewish descent. We were surprised to learn this. It turned out that the name Jews Harp and the inaccuracy of that term had actually prevented people from attending the festival. So the NAJH had a meeting. We decided to change the name of the festival to the North American Jaw Harp Festival. We didn't want any more confusion or people being unsure about attending. We also predicted that some people may not like this decision. But those people already know about the harp and the people we're trying to reach are people who may not even know it exists. So, call it whatever you want. My brother likes to refer to it as a doinger, and I'm going to coin the term twangery do. Harp heads of the world unite. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more harpery. Make sure to keep your harps clean, keep them dry, keep them oiled. But most of all, be good to each other. Harp out. <laughs>